Hey Python people, Simon Franklin here with another lesson in Python Fundamentals. Today let's talk about sets. Okay, so sets. We've already explored some other data types. Uh, we talked about lists and dicts and tuples, strings, booleans, ints and floats. Um, the set data type might be the weirdest data type in that it's probably not in the uh, programming language you're coming from. So most programming languages will have strings or arrays of some kind or booleans. But uh, the set is kind of kind of unique. So let's look at the basic functionality for creating sets, how we can manipulate them, and explore some possible use cases. Um, creating sets. So you know you remember other data types. There's this literal syntax. So I can make a string. I can just put quotes. Right. There's punctuation. Uh, I can make a list. I can put square brackets. Makes a list. If I change those to uh, to parentheses or just left them off, I'd have a tuple. Somehow, uh, we must have run out of punctuation. I don't know what the punctuation should have been, but we ran out of punctuation, so there is no literal syntax to create sets. You create sets by calling uh, the constructor, and you pass the constructor, the set function, a list, um, or actually any iterable would do. In this case, I'm passing it a list. So this is a, a way to make a set. I made set 1 from the values 1, 2, 3, and I'm printing it. I made set 2 from the values 3, 3, 4, and 5, and I'll print it, and you'll notice, hey, set two down here is just three, four, and five. So unique values. It's kind of interesting. The set type has typical kind of you know container type methods and operators. You can add a value to a set because this is a mutable data type. You can remove a value from a set. Again, it's a mutable data type. You can check for containment. That's something we want to do with containers a lot uh, with the in operator in Python. And we've got the built-in len function, the len function to test for length. So let's just run that code there. We can see I added a four to my set successfully. I removed a set, uh, the four from my set. So four is not in the set, and the length is three. Uh, it's an interesting data type. So unlike the list, but kind of like uh, the dict data type, a set doesn't have any order. Unlike the tuple, it's a mutable data type, so you can have them move data, and it's kind of like. Uh, Dictionary keys, if you remember, they're kind of all about the question. Um, it's a pre-built search, you know. Is is this key in the dictionary? Well, the dictionary can answer that question very quickly. A set doesn't have keys, so we're asking the same question, but about values. So the fundamental question with sets is, is this value in a particular set? And values and sets are unique, just like dictionary keys were. So you'll notice when I instantiated it uh, up a little bit from a list that had duplicate values, I come up with a set that has duplicates. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, what is a set? Think back to your your mathematics training. So, you know, really far back. I'm thinking to uh, grade school here. Remember Venn diagrams, right? This kind of thing, overlapping circles. We studied the, uh, the shaded areas. The red here is the stuff that's just in set A. The green is the stuff that's just in set B. And the yellow is the stuff that's in both. And those uh, overlapping colored circles. So, the set data type is actually all about these Venn diagrams. Uh, it's all about you know values that occur in set one but not in set two, uh, values that occur in both sets, and we already have terms for those ideas, and you you have some intuition around the terms. So the intersection of two sets that would be the yellow region, right? Stuff that's in both. The difference would be stuff that's different. So stuff that's in A but not in B is the is the difference. The union is the set of both the sets, right? So you already have some idea about set style logic. And the set data type supports operators and also uh, methods. So S1 minus S2, you'll remember this is the set 1, 2, and 3, minus the set 3, 4, and 5. The difference is just the stuff that's in the left, the left set, or S1 dot difference would be another way of doing the same thing. Similarly, there's the, the pipe operator, which is the bitwise or in Python. I don't often use it as a bitwise or, but uh, the set operator, the set data type kind of overloads the or operator here to indicate um, union stuff that's in A or in B. So the union of S1 or S2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the stuff in both. And you could use the, uh, the method, the union method, as well as the operator, if you can't remember the, uh, the punctuation. There's, uh, I frequently can't remember the punctuation, there's this upper arrow, which is the bitwise exclusive or. I haven't used that very often. 
for bitwise math, but that's the symmetric difference. So what's the symmetric difference? One, two, four, five. Oh, right, all the stuff that's in A, all the stuff that's in B, but none of the stuff that's in both. So an exclusive or, that does kind of make sense, I guess. Uh, there's a bitwise and operator here, the ampersand. That's the intersection, and the intersection would be the stuff that's in one set one and in set two, so three. Okay, so we have Venn diagram operations, and I bet you're kind of thinking, eh, so what, right? Um, I haven't often needed to do stuff with Venn diagrams in my previous programming experience. Um, it turns out sets are a really useful data type in Python. Well, let's, uh, let's take advantage of some of the facts that we've learned about sets and look at some common tasks, you know, stuff that you do all the time. Uh, for instance, sets are unique. So a common use of sets is just to take advantage of their uniqueness and go from a, a iterable that has duplicates to a iterable that does not have duplicates. So here's a list of some colors, red, green, blue, red, purple, yellow, green. Um, convert it to a set and write back to a list and print it, and hey presto, blue, purple, green, yellow, red, only the unique items. Uh, you do lose order, because the set is a non-ordered collection, so if you, uh, if you care about order, figure out a way to, to sort your data beforehand, um, and then apply that sort after you've done run it through the conversion. You wonder how many duplicates you have in a list? You can come up with that pretty easily, right? The length of the list minus the length of the set of the list. So the length of the list that contains duplicates minus the length of the set which doesn't. In this case, uh, we had two duplicates, so let's see. Red is in there twice. Green is in there twice. Yeah, so there were two values um, that were removed when you went down to unique values. So that's cool. What else can we do with a set? Uh, one thing to realize is sets are fast at testing for inclusion. So uh, just like a dictionary can tell you really quickly whether a key is in a dictionary or not, sets can tell you whether a value is in the set or not. So imagine this uh, fairly normal scenario. You load a bunch of records, you process them. You load another bunch of records. You might have some duplicate records in your second bunch, right? So we can handle this situation pretty easily. Here's, uh, here's some bird names in data one and some bird names in data two. I've already processed data one. I'm ready to process data two, so I might write Python code looks like this. Uh, let's loop over data two and check and see. Is this item in data one? So the in operator um, is reasonably efficient against lists. It'll quit as soon as it as it uh, as it finds an item. So if you have a if you have a hit in your in your list, it'll stop as soon as it finds one. It's not like the the count uh, method on lists. But it fundamentally takes uh, a varying length of time depending on how many items are in your list, right? Uh, the savvy programmer knows you look in a list repeatedly, and that search could be slow. It's a it's an O of N operation. If your list is really long and the item's not found, the only way you can prove the item's not found is to check every single item in the list, right? So the longer your list, the longer the search. But a set has, uh, on average, a constant time lookup for values. It's like an O of 1 operation, no matter how many items are in the set. Uh, it's not strictly true, but it's a good approximation. So if you just simply converted data to above, from a list to a set, uh, sorry, and I'm thinking it might be, you want to convert data one to be a set. That might significantly speed up our code, uh, particularly if either of the list is large. So you could say set one equals, uh, I suppose I should run this. Just note, we're processing crow and raven. We didn't process robin because we'd already seen a robin before. And I could do the same thing by converting data one to be a set. And then this if item not in set one, that's a much faster lookup, right? Because it's a constant time lookup. So if set one is extremely large, if set two is extremely large and we're doing lots of lookups, this might save me a great deal of time. And the output is the same. We're still processing Crow and Raven and we'd, uh, we'd ignore Robin, which we'd seen before. So that would run more swiftly. And converting a list to a set before repeatedly checking for inclusion is an important Python performance tip. But if you actually have two lists, it would be even better to realize what you're doing is a Venn diagram thing, right? Let's see, the stuff that's in the set of data one and not in data two is what we really want. So you could just use the, the minus operator or the difference, data two dot difference data one would work. And we get the same output here again. 
So, I hope sets, their usefulness makes sense to you. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that these Venn diagram sorts of issues, um, set sorts of logic, duplication, for instance, deduplication or counting the number of duplicates, um, finding the items that are, uh, that are duplicated in two lists, for instance, might pop up more often than you think. You can be sure to read the official docs at python.org. There's uh, some more operations on sets we haven't covered, and there's uh, the immutable companion frozen set. And that's all for this lesson. Again, if there's uh, anything that I have explained badly or you have further questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at Simeon Franklin. You can hit me on my email, simeon at maracana.com, or feel free to check out my blog, simeonfranklin.com slash blog. Thanks for watching.